we hear very often that the South African steel producer or the South African manufacturer, broadly defined, just needs to get more, um, more competitive in order to fight with China. There are real structural reasons why this is actually not quite as simple as it might seem to somebody who's a comment commentator or an economist looking at this. And this is the reason. Once having put a policy in place um, for, for steel as a strategic resource for China, the Chinese government then went on to put really, really serious resources behind making it happen. There actually wasn't an incentive that was known to men at that point, and a few that were not known to men, that they did not use in order to incentivize and support their steel producers. It went from tax incentives for starting a mill, accelerated depreciation for new plant, soft loans for anything from inventory build to exports, VAT rebates on export. They got breaks on environmental standards. They got breaks on income tax on, um, on uh, payrolls. There isn't actually anything that you can think about as a support for a steel producer that a Chinese steel producer has not enjoyed. They continue to enjoy that today. And if anyone follows this industry sector, they would know that the Americans have been banging on about this currency manipulation story and uh, insisting that the Chinese should let their currency gain the strength that it, should, ought, it ought to have based on, a, um, on the strength of that economy. But that didn't happen either. So while we're seeing a huge amount of import penetration into our own, own markets from Chinese products, we can't similarly penetrate the market the other way because in South Africa, we don't have import tariffs, as you all know, but the Chinese do. The Chinese do protect their local market, either through the currency issue or some import, import barriers of one kind or another. So, so the playing fields between um, us, and not just us in South Africa, but us everywhere, still producers and, and, and our Chinese counterparts, is definitely very uneven, and I don't see it getting even anytime soon been a spectacular success for the Chinese. So if you look at this table on the left-hand side, from an 80 million ton per annum industry in 1992, accounting for just 12% of global production, today China accounts for 47% of global production with 708 million tons that they produce. Eh? That is massive. We have not seen growth like this in any industry sector in any country, to be, to be quite honest. So, so this is the reason that everybody who produces iron ore, hard cooking coal, make their way to China. This is the reason that everybody watches steel prices in China. It is this number that has made China ultimately the driver in our industry. And so whatever happens in South Africa is very much informed by what happens in China even though we still think of our market as this small insulated market. Um, I told you that we, we don't really matter. We've actually gone to 0% of the, we're not, but I think somebody was having fun putting this chart together. Part of the 7 million, of course, is that Aslamita South Africa has cut capacity uh, in response to some of the challenges that I outlined to you. Now, <coughs> excuse me, um, from what we, ch we check, I mean, you, you economists sometimes use steel consumption per capita to track economic development in any country. And that's why we put those numbers in there just for your interest. As a country develops and spends money on infrastructure and its, its society becomes more affluent, people buy fridges, cars, whatever it is, then the rate of steel use uh, naturally increases. So if you look at the world globally uh, as, a, as a unit, steel consumption has risen globally from 127 kilograms per person in 2002 to a rate of 243 per person today. China is the highest, highest still intensive user in the world with 467 kilograms per, ton, per person from 160 in 2002. Again, just underlying how much they've grown to be uh, the global su superpowers as far as steel is concerned. But now look at what's happened in South Africa from 104 to 101. So more or less treading water, not changing much at all. Think about the graph I showed you earlier, which says to us, you know, outside of fixed asset investment, the base load or the base intensity of steel use in this country actually hasn't grown. And if you then set that against the fact that you also have a population that has grown in the interim, it tells you that this is true. 
again, our infrastructure build is not quite as intense as we would have hoped it to be, and that's reflected very much um, in, uh, in that number.